Welcome to the Q&A with the Noble 24th. With us today, we have Private Andrew Dench, who's been with the unit for quite some time now, one of the more senior soldiers. We're going to ask him a few questions. So right off the bat, out of all of the hobbies, what drew you to reenacting? Um, I wanted to uh, meet like-minded people when I moved up to New York State for the first time. Um, I wanted something that would get me out of the house, that would be fun, that would give me different experiences and a chance to meet different people from around the area and beyond. Um, and I really like history, so uh, reenacting was a was like a natural fit for me. And now what is it about the American Revolution that really sparked your interest in the hobby? <clears throat> Well, I, I find, um, as far as history goes, the history of the area that you're living in, um, it really helps you feel connected to that area. Um, New York State has a lot of Revolutionary War history, so um, it seemed in a way kind of inevitable that that would be the, the path I would go down. Um, I, I, I'm drawn to history from all eras, um, but I think the fact that I live here is what brought me to Revolutionary War history. And now, why'd you join the 24th specifically? It's kind of funny. Like, I've always known about the 24th Regiment of Foot. Um, I remember as a boy watching Zulu with my father. Um, I have a thing for uh, Perth Helmets. It's one of that. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I was, it's, and it was just kind of like a, a happy coincidence that, uh, you know, I searched online and I found the 24th. I had no idea that they were one of the regiments that, fought at Saratoga, so it was just a really neat um, opportunity to serve with a very famous regiment. Now, out of your whole experience of being in the hobby, however many years that you've been part of this now, mm -hmm. would you consider this a hobby or is it a lifestyle to you? <laughs> uh, you know what? I think it could be either. You know, I think that's kind of what makes it appealing. I mean, if you're a, a busy person and you don't have tons of time to invest in it, um, but you want to be able to still get out once a month and, and have some fun, but you can. Um, however, if you want to be really involved and get into organizing events or or helping with making uniforms or, or tables, you know, um, there is definitely opportunity to be as involved as you want. And now, what would you say is the best thing about this hobby? Um, the best thing? is um i guess it's the people obviously it's probably like the you know um a pretty common answer i, I imagine um and it certainly is uh and i think being able to have experiences outside of your normal day-to-day -day 21st century life as well um being able to almost step into someone else's shoes and see things a little differently to what you're using And now, on the other side, what would you say is the, the roughest aspect of the hobby itself? Um, well, it's not always easy, you know. Sometimes it's, it's cold or it's raining or it's hot. Um, you, know, you know, maybe you get hurt a little, you know. Like, it's, um, it's not always easy. It is physically demanding. You know, there are some weekends I come home and I'm exhausted, you know, just from marching around for a few days straight. Um, especially, you know, you, you know if, you've, uh, if you're not used to it, it can be quite physically demanding. But at the same time, while, while you're there, it may be hot or discomforting. Um, you know, come the end of the weekend, you're almost sad to leave. And, you know, in a few weeks' time, you find yourself looking forward to the next one. So um, that's kind of part of the fun, I suppose. Yeah. And so following that, you know, and have a little bit of the bad, but let's get back to the good. Out of all the events that you've ever been to or events that you look forward to as an annual sort of thing, what would you say is the best and why? Um, well, I mean, a, a recent highlight for me, because there are, there are a number of them, um, would probably be an event we did last, uh, last season in 2019 uh, where we, we were all in a line and we all fixed bayonets and charged the Americans. And 
it was just really cool to be able to look down the whole line of the army and see everybody's bayonets fixed and it was just like um, I really enjoyed that um events you know each each one has like is like is fun in like different ways um Hobbiton is really cool because it's where the battle was really fought and it's a really nice like beautiful location um Saratoga is kind of fun because it's you know towards the end of the season and so it's a lot more it's kind of like a bit more informal Ticonderoga is an amazing site and but it's, it's also physically demanding <laughs> so um it's a it's a I don't know they all kind of have like good and good a lot of good points yeah um but I, I probably Hobbiton, I think. It's one of my favorites. Yeah. Except for the hill. <laughs> so what would also be now we have a lovely cook, as probably as I've said before on this, uh, Miss Laura Lundy, but out of all the meals that either yes. you've done yourself by doing through your soldier stew that you've made for all the soldiers, or anything that Laura's made, what would you say is the best? The best? Um, you know, it's, it's, you know, I'm quite partial to fry bread in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> um, but honestly, one of the best is just, uh, you know, um, when we're all hot and sweaty after being out in the field and coming back and having like some watermelon or something, it's just like, oh, that, that's great. It's just, it's good. Yeah. But, um, all the food is great. It's, uh, we're very, we're very spoiled. Yeah, and a lot of other regiments would agree, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Especially those that have messed with us at some point. Yes, yes. Now, in line with the kind of the rough aspects of it, there must be some aspect of reenacting that isn't really a deal breaker. It's not really like something that you dread, but it is something that kind of bugs you a little bit, like a pet peeve. What would you say that is in this hobby? <laughs> um the shoes can take some getting used to if i was to choose one thing uh you know they, it can get a little slippery um especially in the in the in the early morning on the wet grass um yeah you gotta it takes some getting used to wearing wearing the um, period shoes uh yeah they, they can get a little dicey sometimes and now as a last question on our what was okay. supposed to be a lightning round but clearly it's all right what is your advice to someone who's just looking to get into historical reenacting? Um, don't be too put off by little things, you know, um, everybody, everybody I've met, you know, whether they're an officer or a soldier are all really enthusiastic and they're all really uh, passionate about what, what we do and what they do. Um, you know, if you, are interested in joining a unit you know send 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 an email send a send a text message or, or pick up the phone um more than more often than not we're really happy to and you know welcome new people and encourage people to try it out and, and don't get too hung up on on little things because the big picture is it's really a lot of fun and now as a little quick little bonus question as a little personal thing, what would you say your favorite color is? <laughs> it has to be red. <laughs> that's that's the, you know, that's been a popular answer. I, I can't imagine. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Andrew Dench, for being here. Uh, the 24th, you know, you thank can you. contact us through all the links and stuff. We have a website. We have a Facebook. We have many different ways you can contact us if you're interested in joining up. But until then, Andrew, we will see you on the fields. See you there.